Hello, this is Lawrence again, and today I'll be showing you how to brine a turkey. <clears throat> now, this is a recipe I found three years ago. Actually, I saw it on television on the Good Eats program. It's Alton Brown's brine turkey recipe that, over the course of three years, I have um, changed it to suit my own tastes. And so that's what I'll be showing you today. So, the first thing you need to make a brine turkey is brine. So, for the brine, you need one and a half cups of salt. I use Morton's kosher salt. Let's see if you can see that. That right there. That is the best salt for brining. As far as I can tell, I've tried about six different kinds, and this is the kind I always use. You need um, about a gallon of vegetable bouillon. Now, I actually use bouillon cubes. This is, Rap this is Rapunzel's vegan vegetable bouillon. Um, I really love this stuff. It's great for just about anything. Each cube makes two cups. Now I'm actually going to use the eight cubes in the box, which makes a gallon all on its own, plus four extra cubes, just to give it a stronger flavor. This is three quarter cups of brown sugar, light brown sugar a tablespoon of allspice berries, three three-inch cinnamon sticks, two tablespoons of black peppercorns, just use the black ones, don't use the white or red. I made that mistake uh, two years ago. Doesn't turn out as well, so just two tablespoons straight black peppercorns. <clears throat> and then you need about a tablespoon and a half of crystallized ginger. This stuff tastes like candy, and um, it gives a real good flavor to the turkey. It's very subtle, so if you're like, oh, I hate ginger, don't really worry. It's not going to be so strong that you can actually tell that you have ginger in your turkey. Um, another good thing this, is, this stuff's for is if you get car sick, take this along as a snack for your road trip and it'll help settle your stomach. Now, these rounds are pretty big so I'm going to cut them down. There we are. All cut down and to sh the size I like. Now for the hard part. You want to bring one gallon of water to boil. That is one gallon of water to boil. While it's heating up, go ahead and add all the ingredients. A cup and a half of salt. Half a cup of brown sugar. Or a three quarters cup brown sugar, I'm sorry. The three cinnamon sticks. Whole is fine. The allspice berries. The black peppercorns. The crystallized ginger. and all 12 of the bouillon cubes. Okay, now that all 12 bouillon cubes are in there, you want to let it come to a boil, let everything melt, and let it go for another I'd say four or five minutes just to make sure that the spices all blend really nicely. And so here we are, 15 minutes later, this is what it should look like. Now a quick warning, do not taste. Don't put any of this into your mouth. I know that sounds weird, but it is a brine. That means it will just taste like salt and nasty. Um, yes, this is not something you want to try to taste. Um, I just say that because I tried that when I first made it, just to see, because I like to taste things, to see how they're supposed to taste, that way next time I make it, I can fix things, but, yeah, not such a great idea. Alright, you can see, or you can kind of see, over here, there's a, um, white buildup on the handles. 
that's from salt spray from this boiling. Um, it's kind of the same thing that happens when you're at the beach uh, and the water splashes up on stuff. Easy to clean off, perfectly normal, don't worry about it. Alright, I think this stuff's ready for the next phase. So let's turn the heat off and go prepare the next thing. Alright, so what I have here is a 50 quart um, Sterilite container that I've cleaned out. Well, I've cleaned, I should say. Okay, so what you want to do first is reach inside your deep freeze and grab a bag of ice. Okay. Now this is a 10 pound bag of ice and just pour it Okay. Now then, so you have 10 pounds of ice inside here, and then dump the hot brine right onto the ice. Make sure you get all the goodness out of there. Okay. And now we add another gallon and a half of water. Okay. The gallon and a half of water and ice, that'll get you started. Now then what you want to do is add the turkey. Now when you put your turkey in, you want to put it in breast side down. Okay. Now then, you want to grab your second bag. of ice. Oh. And put about half of the 10, bag of 10 pound bag of ice just over the turkey. This will hold your turkey under the water, under the um, brine. Also, it will ensure that your turkey stays um, well below the temperature it needs to stay, so that it doesn't start to breed bacteria. What I love about these, um, I call them Tupperware, but. My wife calls them Rubbermaid, whatever you want to call them. What I like about these containers is they lock. I don't know if you can see it, but you want to keep the temperature below 40. You see right now with the ice I just put in, it's at 30 degrees. It needs to stay below 40, so be, be sure to check back every couple of hours to uh, make sure you haven't gone above and if it starts getting really close to that 40 mark, just pour some more ice on it, you'll be fine. Now then, I always let it sit for about 12 hours. I hear um, 40 minutes per pound. Um, so, you can go by that, but for me, personally, I go 12 hours. After about 6 hours, I'll flip it, and then leave it for another 6 hours, and then it'll be ready to cook. All right, so 12 hours and three bags of ice later. 
you can see it's still under 40 degrees. Turkey's been sitting in there. I flipped it once at about six hours. And now it's time for the next step. All right, so now that we have um, brined the turkey for 12 hours, you need to rinse it off real good. And my sink is tiny, so I just use the tub. And it'll be fine, just um, after you're done with this, run some bleach into your tub, fill it up, and it'll kill everything that this might have put in there for you. And you want to rinse the turkey really good. Inside and out. And you see this thing right here? The little... It's supposed to tell you when your turkey's done. Get rid of that. You don't need it. And you're more likely to screw your turkey up if you go by this thing. All right, now that the turkey has been thoroughly rinsed, what you want to do is pat it dry with paper towels so you can throw them away. So you can see the turkey in the roasting pan. Now it's time for the next part.